What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sean Robert Johnson. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's episode that we got for y'all, so let's just get straight to it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host. And as you know, I'm currently incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trenton, New Jersey. And I have been for the last 17, 17 and a half years. Don't forget to become a subscriber on both of our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio and at Sean Robert Johnson, as well as follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio and at Shaw John 1222 that's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. And don't forget to visit our website, prisonaudio.com, so you can see all the available episodes we have on the Prison Audio Network. So today's episode is about the U.S. Marshals. And I want to talk about the U.S. Marshals because being hunted by the U.S. Marshal is a horror and an intense experience. The U.S. Marshal Service is the oldest federal law enforcement agency in the United States, known for their expertise in tracking and apprehending fugitives. And before I even get into what it might entail, I just want to tell you my experience with the marshals. Well, when I caught my case back in 2006, I was in New Jersey, and I ended up going to Allegheny County in PA, Pennsylvania. And while I was out there for the week, they had me on their fugitive list because I had to warrant for my arrest. At this time, it was before they knew anything that actually happened before. So, yeah, I had a warrant for my arrest, and I became on the radar of the U.S. Marshals in my own situation. When that happened, I didn't know that they knew where I was at. I don't know how they found out where I was at until this day. But they ended up finding where I was at, and I remember it was 4 o'clock in the morning. And it's funny because looking back now, that I didn't have read so much stuff or seen so many things that say that 4 o'clock is the morning that they are taught to do whatever they want to do as far as apprehend somebody for arrest because that's the one time that people are in their heaviest sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning. So this is why a lot of raids and stuff happen at 4 o'clock in the morning. So they came and they came in the house and they grabbed me up. It was about like 10 of them. And I remember when they grabbed me, when they was handcuffing me, they had at least like eight guns like pressing to the back of my head and on my body, different shotguns, different uh and guns and it is like yo if you move we going to kill you so i remember that and that was my experience with them and then they ended up taking me to the federal building from there they sent me to the county jail out there so that's just part of my experience there so i know what it's like firsthand when you are dealing with the marshals so they are they have a re- relentless pursuit Right, The U.S. Marshals are highly trained in locating and apprehending fugitives. They use advanced technology, intelligence gathering, and coordination with other law enforcement agencies to track down individuals. They are high pressure. Knowing that skilled law enforcement agents are actively seeking you creates immense psychological pressure. This stress can affect your decision-making and lead to mistakes that might result in capture. You have limited mobility. Fugitives often have to constantly move to avoid detection, making it difficult to settle anywhere or maintain a normal life. This nomadic lifestyle can be exhausting and disorienting. You have resourcefulness and survival. Staying off the radar requires resourcefulness. Fugitives might use false identities, avoid digital footprints, and rely on cash transactions. Survival skills become crucial as a fugitive has to find ways to secure a few food, shelter, and transportation without drawing attention. You have isolation and paranoia. Trust becomes a rare commodity. Fugitives often isolate themselves, fearing betrayal by acquaintances or being spotted by someone who might report them. This isolation can lead to heightened paranoia and mental strain. You also have risk of confrontation. Encounters with the marshals can be dangerous. The U.S. marshals are armed and prepared to use forces necessary, leading to potential violent confrontations. And I mention this because, like I said, my story, when I was NPA, and I remember, like, when I was on a bus and I knew they were, like, looking for me, I wouldn't talk to anybody when I was on the bus. Like, I wouldn't talk to nobody, had my hat on, kept my hoodie on the whole time, so it kind of, like, left my face concealed. And I remember while I was on a Greyhound bus, we went through, like, a uh, one of the forts, and they had some police that came on a bus. 
or some police on the bus that was like asking for identification and I had mine that was in my bag so they asked me for it and I told them mine was in my luggage so they didn't say nothing they just let it keep going at that time because you guys remember this is 2006 so how they go about stuff nowadays with the marshals definitely was completely different back in 2006 but they still was on top of everything when they swarmed the house I think it was about at least 30 of them it was like at least 30 all I seen was like flashlights handguns, and they definitely stormed the house to come in there to capture me. So it's definitely an experience that's, that's definitely different. So you don't know what's going to happen. You see so many things. I hear so many things of how people get caught up with the marshals, and, you know, it could go left sometime. Fortunately for me, it didn't. But that right there, just the experience that I went through with them. So definitely don't got to ever worry about that again so I'm definitely not going through that again with him so if you have any questions any comments call 1-800-366-0911 that's 1-800-366-0911 or send an email to stories at prisonaudio.com that's S-T-O-R-I-E-S the S sign P-R-I-S-O-N A-U-D-I-O dot com and don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both of our YouTube channels at Prison Audio and at Sean Robert Johnson as well as follow us on Instagram at Prison Audio and at Sean John 1222 that's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N 1222 and visit our website prisonaudio.com for all the latest episodes that we have up there so thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson that's me your host and I always appreciate when y'all tune in and listen to each episode. Stay tuned for the next episode coming soon. Everybody have a good day.